the final item of business is members' business debate on motion 16208 in the name of Rona Mackay on Stocking Awareness Week 2019. And this debate will be concluded without any questions being put. May I ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons and I call on Rona Mackay to open the debate for around seven minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm pleased to have this opportunity to highlight Stocking Awareness Week, which takes place from April the 8th to the 12th. And can I thank all members across the chamber who supported my motion. Presiding Officer, imagine having to look over your shoulder every waking moment, being afraid to look at your texts, check your emails, or walk up to your own door. Stalking is a horrible, insidious crime. It's a profound effect on victims, both mentally and physically, and can sometimes culminate in serious violence. A stalker's actions may, at first glance, seem like a kind, romantic gesture. For example, sending flowers to the victim, but it actually signifies, I know where you live, or I know where you work. It strikes fear into the victim's heart. And the alarming news is that reported instances of stalking, and it is a vastly underreported offence for reasons I'll explain later, have doubled in the past five years. The latest figures from the 2017 to 2018 Scottish Crime and Justice Survey reveal that stalking incidences have more than doubled since 2012, totalling 1,376 in Scotland. One in four young women aged 16 to 24 have been victims. That's 26.9%, and that's just those who reported it to the police, a fraction of the true figure. 41% of cases were not known to the victims, and they were stranger stalkers. Presiding officer, I find that shocking. The most common type of stalking and harassment is unwanted messages by text, email, messenger, or posts on social media sites. Incidences like this will only increase unless something is done to stop them. Anne Moles, founder of the excellent charity Action Against Stalking, knows only too well the devastating effects being a victim of stalking has. Anne founded the charity after a horrific personal experience with a stalker. She's allowed me to tell her story to illustrate how it affected her life. She says, he was a sadistic sexual predatory stalker who chose to remain anonymous throughout his two year campaign of unrelenting terror and abuse. This man, whoever he was, had forced himself into some delusional relationship with me without my knowing or without my consent. The impact this was having on every aspect of my life was every bit as cruel as the sickening act he wanted me to be part of. What started with a simple but filthy Valentine's card in 2004 soon escalated to sexual deviant photographs and items of women's lingerie posted to my home, silent and disturbing phone calls in the middle of the night. I knew he was watching me, he told me so and letters outlined a slow and unfolding violent and sadistic fantasy of bondage, rape and torture that he believed would one day be his reality and I would enjoy it. Such was his delusion, he'd even chosen his location. But my stalker, my stalker knew all about me, but I knew nothing about him. Eventually, too scared to go out, my home became my prison. His freedom became my incarceration. Living with constant fear, anxiety and uncertainty soon took its toll. I was suffering from nervous ex exhaustion, I lost weight, my hair started to fall out, I suffered uncontrollable migraines and chest pains. I was scared I was going to have a heart attack or a stroke. I didn't think I would survive this, and like a deck of cards, every aspect of my life slowly started to crumble, and there was nothing I could do to stop it. Presiding officer, I think that more or less says it all about stalking. We must do more to protect victims of this offence before more people are terrorised. To reduce the number of people stalked, we need to dramatically increase the number of stalkers who are convicted. In a landmark move in 2014, the Crown Office and Police Scotland raised the profile of stalking to a priority listed crime, and this complements the recent wave of Scottish Government legislation which aims to tackle psychological harm, such as the Domestic Abuse Act, which came into force yesterday, which legislates against coercion and control and recognises that child witnesses of abuse are victims too. Presiding officer, stalking became an offence in Scotland in 2010. Prior to that, stalking was generally prosecuted using common law offences such as breach of the peace. The only protection available to victims currently is to pursue a, a non-harassment order through the civil courts, often at their own expense, often at victims' own expense, at a time when they're at their most vulnerable. 
Civil actions for NHOs are very rare, often because the victim simply can't face a journey through the justice system at, a time, at that time or can't afford it if they don't qualify for legal aid. Presiding officer, I'm in the draft proposal stages of introducing a member's bill which would allow police to apply for a stalking protection order directly to a civil court on behalf of the victim. It would prevent es uh, harassment from escalating or continuing and give victims much needed protection. These orders would last for a maximum of two years but, but could be renewed and breach would be a criminal offence resulting in a custodial offence, uh, sorry, a custodial sentence. A similar bill was passed at Westminster last month and victims living in Scotland must have the same protection. The Westminster bill related only to stranger stalking, but I'm proposing that my bill would have a wider remit to include partners and victims of domestic abuse where the incidence of stalking are extremely high. Presiding officer, stalking has a severe, long-lasting and life-changing effect on victims. They can suffer nightmares, panic attacks, guilt, thoughts of suicide, loneliness, fear and terror. It can damage relationships with families, romantic relationships, friends, relationships with friends and neighbours. In fact, it can affect their career, finances and entire domestic life. And this is something that no one should have to go through. So we must stem the tide of this insidious crime now and send a clear message to stalkers that they will be stopped and prosecuted before more people's lives are ruined. Thank you. I will move to the open debate and I call Liam Kerr to be followed by Jenny Gilruth. Thank Four you. Minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, I congratulate Rona Mackay for gaining the cross-party support for the motion on Stalking Awareness Meet week. Um, I actually think this is one of the best members debates. I was genuinely really pleased to speak in this because it is so important and I think raising awareness is paramount. Uh, stalking was something I reflected upon when I read the 2017-18 Scottish Crime and Justice Survey. This was a survey that aimed to find out more about crimes that are not reported to police, which is important because we know that two-thirds of crime does go unreported. And it, Section 9.1 of the survey, respondents were asked if they had experienced one or more of various, of various incidents defined as stalking, including having someone waiting outside their home or workplace on more than one occasion, being followed on more than one occasion, having intimate pictures shared without their consent. And incredibly, they found that over 10% of adults experienced at least one type of stalking or harassment in the past year. It also suggests, as the motion rightly flags, that this appears to be gendered, with over one in four women aged between 16 and 24 apparently having been the victim of stalking or harassment. Now, Rona Mackay flags that recorded offences of stalking have more than doubled since 2012, but crucially, the survey tells us that only around one in 10 of those who were victims actually report it. So clearly, more does need to be done to protect victims of stalking, and that means looking both at what can be done, but also what we're doing as a parliament to protect victims. And one of the incidents I have in mind when I was putting this together was reported in the Courier fairly recently, and involves a woman who has been stalked following the equally tragic circumstances of her father's death. The stalker would taunt and harass her in a horrific campaign, uh, and he was eventually sentenced to 21 months in prison. However, on appeal, this sentence was ruled too severe, and he was instead ordered to carry out 200 hours of unpaid work in the community, despite the fact that he knew where she lived, where she went to college, and other personal things about her. One can only imagine the mental trauma on this poor woman of his release. So we must tread as a parliament very carefully before releasing criminals back into the community in these circumstances. And of course, in this case, the stalker was brought in, questioned and sentenced. But there are many other cases in which complaints are lodged with police and for various reasons, nothing results. For example, a young woman who reported she was being stalked at various places, including her workplace and on her walk home, lodged six complaints with the police. But according to the brave Herald reporter who spoke out, spoke out about his extraordinarily courageous daughter's experience, the man was unfit to be interviewed. And because they couldn't locate the social worker or find an appropriate adult, there would be no charge and no conviction. So the man could continue showing up at the girl's place of work, which he did, and there was nothing she or security could do to stop him. 
So stories like these and the sheer numbers of people who are victimized by stalking validate in my mind the importance of raising awareness of stalking. But awareness is not enough. The motion commends action against stalking and it is right to do so. But I think it's important to flag that just last week the founder said that the Scottish Government needs to raise their game. There is no dedicated strategy or dedicated funding and it is not a priority for the Scottish Government. That has to change. Indeed, and I associate myself with Rona Mackay's comments in that regard and perhaps the Minister will address directly that point in closing and show that change is coming. President Officer, reading these women's stories and recognising the prevalence of stalking convinces me of the value of raising awareness of Stalking Awareness Week. And I hope that following the debate today, this Parliament can make substantial progress, both in raising awareness of the issue and ensuring victims of stalking feel better protected, better able to come forward and better supported when they do. Thank you. Jenny Gilruth, followed by Rhoda Grant. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I congratulate my friend and colleague Rona Mackay on securing this evening's important members' debate on Stalking Awareness Week 2019. And it is a particularly timely debate, as has already been mentioned uh, this evening, given that yesterday marked the introduction of the Domestic Abuse Scotland Act, which criminalises for the first time in Scotland coercive and controlling behaviour. Stalking is rooted in control as a definition to pursue or approach stealthily conveys. The ways in which individuals can control others have, however, long changed since Glenn Close and her infamous bunny boiling. These days, coercion often happens electronically in ways in which are far more difficult for traditional policing to intercept. Members may remember the case of one of my constituents, which was reported on in August of last year. Her ex-partner hounded my constituent at her home in Fife. He took screenshots of private conversations that she'd had on her phone. He also repeatedly sent text messages and social media messages to my constituent. He threatened to disclose sensitive information about her to her employer. He admitted taking a photograph of her drying herself as she came out of the shower. He bombarded my constituent with texts to tell her he knew exactly where she was after having planted a mobile phone in the boot of her car. In short, he made her life a living hell by stalking her. In sentencing the accused last year, the sheriff described his actions as sustained, sophisticated and sinister. However, he avoided a jail sentence and was instead sentenced to 180 hours of community payback. As has previously been mentioned, Am Moulds was the driving force behind Action Against Stalking, the only dedicated stalking uh, charity nationally. And Anne's experience, whilst different to my constituents, has its similarities. In writing in last week's Evening Times, Anne spoke about the community service order served upon her stalker. She said, it wasn't right. My stalker got help to rehabilitate uh, him and my life was left as a mess. I was therefore glad to see the Cabinet Secretary last year commit to the establishment of a Victims Task Force, which will take evidence directly from the victims and victims groups on their experiences of the justice system. And another important part of reforming the legislation around stalking was begun by my friend Mary Gujan, MSP, last year and focuses on introducing stalking protection orders to allow the police to apply directly to the court where there is evidence of stalking. Currently, a non-harassment order means victims need to take legal action themselves through the civil courts, and there are obvious reasons why some victims of stalking would not want to do this, and I'm delighted that Rona Mackay will now be taking these proposals forward. Just last week, the Scottish Crime and Justice Survey, as has previously been mentioned, published figures which confirmed that more than one in four young women have been the victim of stalking or harassment in Scotland. That's 26.9% of females aged 16 to 24 who have experienced at least one incident in the previous year. And in Fife, there were 139 cases of stalking reported to the police in 2017-18. But most have not told the police only 9% of cases overall were reported and recorded. That means only 1 in 10 respondents told the police, as Liam Kerr has mentioned. I hope the government will take time to reflect on these figures and I would strongly encourage um, some consideration of perhaps an education campaign to raise the profile of stalking as an offence, much like as has been done with the domestic abuse and coercion in the last 12 months by the government. There is a link certainly between domestic abuse and stalking. A half of those who have experienced stalking and harassment had also experienced partner abuse. However, 41% of respondents said the offender was someone they had never met. So any education campaign would also need to consider the equal prevalence of stranger stalking, as has already been mentioned uh, again this evening, which is indeed often enabled by technology. So 67% of those who responded had experienced stalking or harassment last year um, by unwanted messages uh, through text or social media communication. 
Stalking is ultimately about control, using an app to track someone's movements, following their existence on social media, accessing their text messages remotely from another app, all ways that technology allows individuals to exert control over others. Fundamentally, however, stalking ruins lives. It creates fear and alarm and it isolates people by causing anxiety. It is a crime and we all have a duty as MSPs to remind the country of that message during Stalking Awareness Week and beyond. Thank you. Rhoda Grant, followed by Willie Coffey. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I would like to con congratulate Rona Mackay on securing this important members debate, and I also look forward to hearing more about her members bill, because I believe a victim should never be responsible for their own protection. Can I also pay tribute to Anne Moulds um, of uh, Action, um, Action Against Stalking? Uh, Rona Mackay outlined Anne's personal terrifying experience of stalking. But she was instrumental in getting the law changed in Scotland to make stalking a crime. And I remember the first time I met her. She came to see me to persuade me to add stalking into my domestic abuse bill at that time. Stalking was recognised as a sinister act, but was not a criminal offence in its own right and was dealt with through the common law, um, such as breach of the peace. I didn't believe that my domestic abuse bill was the right place to do that. However, the Criminal Justice and Licensing Scotland Bill was going through the Parliament at the same time, and it was a better vehicle to criminalise stalking, so we worked on an amendment to that effect. Not only did Anne persuade me to do that, but then she persuaded the committee to accept that amendment. And you can imagine there was reluctance to do that, given they had not taken evidence on stalking at stage one, but by her sheer tenacity, she convinced them it made my, made my job of getting the amendment through so much more easy. Anne knew firsthand of the terrifying nature of the crime and she wanted to protect others from having to go through the trauma that she had. It's, ex, it's an extremely difficult crime to define for legislation. Seemingly innocent actions can take on a sinister bearing just because of the context. As Rona Mackay said, a bunch of flowers, something normally welcome, can be absolutely terrifying. And I remember vividly one of the examples I was given when working on the amendment. A woman left a note to herself on the kitchen table to buy a loaf of bread before she left for work. When she came home that night, the note had been replaced by a loaf of bread. In most circumstances, that would be a kind gesture but it takes a whole new meaning when you learn she lived alone and was being stalked. When something is sometimes a crime and sometimes not, depending on the context, it's very hard to legislate for it. However, we achieved it. What is concerning now, however, is the increase in cases of stalking. And some of this might be because there is now legal protection and it makes these crimes easier to report and identify. And while this will account for some of the increase, I believe there is a lot more uh, opportunity available to those who, are who would be stalkers. And Jenny Gilruth talked about how new technology makes stalking so much easier. And social media also helps to track people. And the ability to do this can be helpful in the right context. But when stalking's involved, it can be terrifying. It's also hard to identify um, both the crime and the perpetrator. As I explained, actions that can be innocent can also be sinister, making it difficult to show that these are crimes at all. And stalkers can be very devious. They can be a stranger or they can be someone known to their victim. On the other hand, they can be very, very close and they get pleasure out of watching the real distress that their actions can cause. And in some cases, they're an ex-partner. The relationship itself might not have been abusive, but the impact of ending it may lead to an ex-partner becoming a stalker because they're unable to accept that that relationship is over. Stalking takes many forms and therefore difficult to identify and difficult to cope with. Not only did Anne Moulds change the law, but she also campaigns against stalking and to this day, through Action Against Stalking, she is providing information training and support to victims. Her work has provided a lifeline to others and I commend her for it. Willie Coffey, followed by Oliver Mundell. Thanks very much, President Officer. Can I also congratulate Rona Mackay for securing this debate for Stalking Awareness Week next week. And I make this contribution on behalf of a number of women in my constituency who have raised this issue with me. 
I would also like to thank East Ayrshire, Women's Aid and Dan Moulds, of course, who's been mentioned already, of Action Against Stalking, for taking the time to provide some valuable briefings for the debate. Uh, under the 2010 Act, a stalking offence occurs when a person engages in a course of action, a course of conduct on at least two separate occasions, which causes another person to feel fear or alarm, and where the accused person intended, knew or ought to have known that their conduct would cause fear and alarm. Anne Mould's pioneering work has become internationally recognised, contributing most notably to the introduction of the Act itself in 2010, and has subsequently been adopted in England and Wales, and has also been included in the Council of Europe's Istanbul Treaty. So huge credit is due to Anne and her organisation for leading the way on this issue. As recently as 2016-17, the Scottish Crime Survey highlighted that only 20% of victims choose to report stalking to the police. It's important to remember, presiding officer, how low that figure is. Clearly, there's an opportunity to improve awareness of this and to offer encouragement to people to report what is in fact a criminal offence. In my discussion with, with East Ayrshire Women's Aid, they advised that in their experience, stalking is most often perpetrated by former and current partners. Of the three or 400 women supported by the East Ayrshire Women's Aid each year, a significant number have experienced continued harassment after they have left an abusive partner. I think, President Officer, there's still a perception by the public that stalking is limited to a person following you about, turning up at your home, causing fear and alarm with their presence. However, it's important to be clear that stalking comes in many forms, not just physical. Unwanted phone calls, whether completed or not, were often used as a means of intimidation and, and still are in many cases. And sadly, the digital social media revolution provides an easy route today for stalkers to gain access to their victims. And Jenny Goldruth mentioned earlier that according to the Crime and Justice Survey's findings, 67% of victims experienced this type of stalking using social media, text and messaging systems to intimidate their victims. Indeed, East Ayrshire Women's Aid advised that some of the reported experiences have included trackers on phones or cars and hacking into Facebook accounts. So stalking has indeed gone digital. I know that the police in East Ayrshire undergo online training to recognise the offence of stalking and they further undergo annual practical training in recognising the offence. Police Scotland in Ayrshire and East Ayrshire have advised that as a result of this training, typically over 90% of stalking cases that are reported to them result in the perpetrator being charged, but the numbers coming forward initially are still pretty low. That's an encouraging statistic, but I hope it gives the public the confidence to, to be able to report instances of stalking. In terms of local statistics, though, in East Ayrshire, there were only 23 instances of recorded crimes of stalking and 16 detections of that crime, perhaps confirming, I think, again, presiding officer, that more needs to be done here. Scotland has been at the, the forefront in criminalising stalking and championing the rights of victims of stalking, both women and men. It's good to recognise that Action Against Stalking continues to deliver much needed support and advice, not only for victims, but for the statutory agencies too. They know that we are only beginning to understand the impact that stalking has. It can and it does have a severe and long-term psychological impact on victims and some relocate and change jobs to escape and to be able to feel safe again. The maximum penalty presiding officer under the 2010 Act is five years. But an offence under the new Domestic Abuse Act can carry a 14-year sentence, yet both acts place psychological harm as the governing criteria in establishing the offence. That's possibly something for the government to reflect on as we move forward. Can I thank Rona Mackay once again for bringing this important matter to the attention of Parliament this evening? Thank you. The last of the open debate contributions is from Oliver Mundell. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. Can I start by joining other members in thanking Rona Mackay uh, for ensuring that this uh, motion um, is being discussed tonight. I think uh, we've heard, uh, Presiding Officer, a very powerful and opening uh, moving speech. And I, I think the work that uh, Rona Mackay is doing in this area is to be con commended. And uh, I'll certainly be very interested uh, to consider her bill uh, more fully uh, when it comes forward. It's also been an interesting debate listening uh, to all the open contributions across 
uh, the chamber, uh, you see the same uh, themes uh, popping up uh, again and again. Um, and I think the listening to other people, you know, very few people uh, from their constituency work who won't be aware um, of, of uh, individuals, uh, particularly women who've, who've been victims uh, of, of stalking and how difficult sometimes it is uh, to ensure that support's in place uh, for those uh, individuals when they need it most. Um, I think for me, one of the most frustrating things is I think a lot of people think uh, of, of some of the, the kind of actions um, or elements of stalking that are being discussed like flowers or uh, photographs as being trivial or funny um, or uh, you know, sometimes I've heard people suggest that you know, it's, it, it's quite flattering um, and you know, what's very clear uh, listening to contributions and also uh, from conversations I've had in my own uh, constituency work is people don't find uh, these actions to be pleasant uh, or trivial and in fact they can make people's life uh, a, a misery. Um, and I think we've got to uh, make sure that that message gets out there. And I think today's debate is a really good way of, of sending that signal uh, that people in this parliament, people right through uh, the, the uh, criminal justice system take uh, stalking seriously um, and recognize that it does destroy uh, people's lives and, and, and takes away people's uh, rights um, and, and dignity to, uh, to enjoy uh, the, the, the freedoms uh, that we do um, and I think that sort of takes me on to the other point that I picked up really around uh, the different forms it takes. Um, I know that Willie uh, Coffey um, had mentioned the online element and Rona Mackay mentioned that at the start but I think it does take on uh, you know, a whole uh, new meaning uh, when you see um, what some people are subjected to and I certainly remember uh, during some of the evidence I took hold on the Justice Committee you know, he hearing from women who you know, were sort of well, repeatedly subject to you know, bombardment of messages where uh, you know, there was no time in the day where they went without uh, hearing from people uh, threatening them um, and, 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 and passing uh, comment. And I think uh, that, that there's something very, very sinister about that, particularly when you don't know uh, who the person at the other end of those messages um, is. So it's you know, a reason for us to uh, redouble our efforts. And I think the other uh, sort of worrying point um, it, to me is that the fact that people don't feel confident uh, to report this behavior, I don't, I don't know uh, what the reasons for that are, but the one thing uh, I would really uh, impress upon the government from, from my point of view is that it's important uh, to, to go away and, and, and do some work and find out why people don't feel able uh, to report stalking um, and what, why, um, you know, why it is it so poorly uh, recorded? Because uh, I think if we don't have the right data um, and we don't understand uh, what that barrier is, um, it's very difficult to, to take action and ensure that education campaigns and awareness really targets those uh, who need it most. So thank you very much, President Officer. I now call Ash Denham to respond to the debate. Uh, for around seven minutes, please, Minister. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I'd like to begin, as others have this evening, by congratulating Rona Mackay on bringing forward this member's debate on stalking this evening. And I thought um, her speech was uh, very provoking and bringing um, very vividly to life the very serious impact that stalking can have on people, on their life, on their mental health, and so on. Um, and the insidious and sinister nature also of stalking was raised by a number of members, um, such as Jenny um, Gilruth, Rhoda Grant, and uh, Willie Coffey. A few days after the Scottish Crime and Justice Survey revealed the extent of stalking behaviour that takes place, and ahead of National Stalking Awareness Week next week, it is right that the Parliament should have the chance to debate this very important issue. And we know that stalking is experienced by many people right across the country and it can completely disrupt a victim's life, as we've heard this evening. In the past, uh, we should acknowledge that the justice system might not always have taken the issue sufficiently seriously. The individual actions of a stalker seen in isolation might have seemed trivial to some and not the business of the police or the courts. But behaviour like constantly making unwanted phone calls, sending text messages, following the victim between their home or work or leaving unwanted gifts, 
might not necessarily appear to pose an immediate danger to the victim. However, when that continues for days, for weeks or months or even years on end, it can seriously interfere with how a victim can go on with their daily life. And we know that this behaviour can be motivated by obsession or fixation, and in the most extreme cases can be the precursor to serious assault, rape or even to murder. I think it's important, therefore, to reflect on how far we've come in a relatively short time in recognising the seriousness of stalking. The work done by the Susie Lampley Trust and Action Against Stalking has been crucial in raising awareness of the seriousness of stalking and changing public attitudes. And this parliament led the way across the UK with the introduction of a specific criminal offence of stalking in 2010. And this has helped the police and the Crown Office to deal more effectively with stalking and harassment. And it's also helped to raise awareness that stalking is criminal. Members have highlighted the impact that stalking can have on mental health of survivors. And this year, the focus of National Stalking Awareness Week is on stalking as a public health issue. In June 2018, the Deputy First Minister announced a three-year funding package of £1.35 million, which will be invested to create a national trauma training programme to support over 5,000 frontline workers across all sectors of the Scottish workforce who are responding to psychological trauma. And we are always open to consider what further improvements may be needed to improve the law. I'm aware that Rona Mackay is considering a proposal for a member's bill on stalking protection orders. Um, I'm very keen to see the detail of that bill and we will give it um, obviously uh, very careful consideration um, when we see the details. So moving on to some other issues. So Police Scotland um, are currently delivering training in stalking and harassment and that's within their investigators development programme. And there's also a multi-agency short life working group which is considering implementation of a new model of risk assessment and management for stalking which will examine the opportunity to improve police training on the dynamics of stalking and harassment and also on the tactics that are used by stalkers. And all the guidance and the training in this area recognises that reported incidents should be viewed within the context of a pattern of behaviours and not in isolation. Members have also highlighted during the debate the importance of ensuring that victims of stalking receive appropriate support. And there are a number of organisations involved in supporting stalking victims and survivors in Scotland. So Victim Support Scotland supports people across Scotland who are the victims of crime, whether that is reported or unreported, and this includes helping victims of stalking. The Scottish Women's Rights Centre provides free legal information, advice and representation to women survivors of stalking, and services are available through a national helpline and also at local legal surgeries. Scottish Women's Aid and local women's aid services provide support to survivors of domestic abuse and this type of abuse can also include stalking. And Scotland's forced marriage and domestic abuse helpline operates 24 hours a day. And all of these organisations are involved in the Scottish National Stalking Group together with the Crown Office, with Police Scotland and Action Against Stalking. And this group aims to improve responses to victims and survivors of stalking in Scotland. Um, I'm aware that Action Against Stalking have called for funding for a specific um, support service for the victims of stalking. I think that was mentioned uh, by Liam Kerr this evening. The so Scottish Government is in dialogue with Action Against Stalking to understand better what further support um, might be needed in this area and I can update members on that in the future. We know that while stalking can affect both men and women, the Scottish Crime and Justice Survey, which was published um, just recently on the 26th of March, does show that women are much more likely to report being persistently stalked by a single perpetrator. And it also shows that women are twice as likely to report being stalked by a partner and three times as likely to report having been stalked by someone that they had gone on a date with. And this shows that very often stalking of women can be seen as part of a broader pattern of gender-based violence. And within the context of equally safe strategy on violence against women and girls, the Scottish Government is working with schools, colleges and universities to ensure that they have the appropriate tools and resources to address the issue of sexual harassment and to support children and young people who may be experiencing gender-based violence. And so last year, the Minister for Further Education, Higher Education and Science launched the Equally Safe Higher Education Toolkit, and that provides resources for institutions to tackle gender-based violence. 
The Scottish Government is supportive also of the development and rollout of a smartphone app, which is called Follow It. Um, and this was designed by the Scottish Women's Rights Centre. Uh, the app was originally developed with funding from Foundation Scotland, Nominet, Trust and Comic Relief, with input from survivors and also victims' organisations, Police Scotland and The Crown. And so this app allows victims to accurately log stalking incidents so they have a complete record of offending behaviour. And funding from the Scottish Government has supported the development of awareness raising materials about the app, um, a victim's feedback process and the delivery of training to statutory and also voluntary organisations by the Scottish Women's Rights Centre which will support and improve multi-agency responses to stalking. In addition, a specialist sexual harassment solicitor funded by the Scottish Government and the ROSA Fund will operate in the Scottish Women's Rights Centre new sexual harassment legal service. And in 2019, the Scottish Government will be supporting a national public campaign to raise awareness about sexual harassment. So in conclusion, presiding officer, this has been a, a very good debate with thought-provoking um, speeches from across the chamber this evening. It's clear that Scotland has moved a long way in recent years in recognising and addressing stalking behaviour, but it's also clear that there's always more that we can do, and we will seek to do everything that we can to help protect people from the horrific effects that stalking behaviour can have. Thank you. That concludes the debate and this meeting is closed.